In 1920, a man named Lothrop Stoddard wrote a book called The Rising Tide of Color Against White World Supremacy. At first glance, this sounds like a book for balancing equality of the races, but it's anything but that. This book theorized that the West would fall in the future due to racial mixing and an increase in the black population. And unless we banned interracial marriage, it would destroy the West. Lothrop believed in racial hierarchy, that whites were superior, and his books were read broadly throughout the U.S. and other countries at the time. One of his books introduced the term Untermensk, the German translation of Underman into Nazi conceptions of race. Stoddard, like the Nazis, saw the Jews as a lower race, believed crossings with a black was uniformly fatal, and that the Nordic race which he was in needed to be preserved through eugenics. Stoddard was an active consultant and member of the KKK, a letter from the Ku Klux Klan to members praised Stoddard's racist book, The Rising Tide of Color. After publishing his book, which became so popular, eventually Republican President Warren G. Harding read and praised the book. Stoddard, a racist KKK, high up consultant and eugenicist, then turned his focus to women's health and together with Margaret Sanger, founded the American Birth Control League in 1921 focusing on the rights of a woman to stop conception and promoting sterilization of the insane and feeble-minded. This organization, 21 years later, changed its name to become the now well-known Planned Parenthood. Stoddard wrote primarily on the alleged dangers poised by colored peoples to white civilization. Many of his books and articles were racist and described what he saw as the peril of non-white immigration. He presents a view of the world that directs concern to the coming population explosion among non-white peoples of the world, and the way in which white world supremacy was being lessened in the wake of World War I and the collapse of colonialism. In the book, Stoddard blamed the ethnocentrism of the German Teutonic imperialists for the outbreak of World War I. In 1939, Stoddard went to Nazi Germany to report on the right six leadership after six years in power. The regime gave him special access to Hitler, Heimler, and other luminaries for interviews, which Stoddard wrote about in his memoir, Into the Darkness, Nazi Germany Today. By darkness, Stoddard was, was referring to allied air raids over Germany, not the mass genocidal plans by the Germans against Jews, blacks, and gays. In Berlin, Stoddard learned about the government's forced sterilization efforts. As Stoddard later wrote, Germany's racial laws were, quote, weeding out the worst strains in the German stock in a scientific and truly humanitarian way." End quote. He also thought the Jews were a problem to society and that Germany would solve it by the Third Reich. Make no mistake, Stoddard was not only a racist through and through, his works influenced Germany, presidents, the KKK, and founders of organizations still in existence to this day. Stoddard would be proud of the accomplishments of weeding out lesser races through his work at the organization that became Planned Parenthood. In 50 years, his hateful dream of reducing minority races has been accomplished through abortion, which affects African American communities most because of the wage gap. The black community has estimated to have lost 20 to 27 future people of color due to the lower class status and lack of fathers in many people of color communities. This has led to black population growth stagnating at 13.4% instead of growing to a potential 15 to 18%. Stoddard believed immigration restriction and birth control legislation would reduce members of the lower class and that the white race needed to be preserved through eugenics, which believes in excluding people and groups judged to be inferior or promoting superior races like whites. Stoddard in Nazi Germany may be dead, but his legacy and work lives on in Planned Parenthood and the KKK through eugenics and his hate of anyone that doesn't share his shade of skin. It should shake everyone to their core that this man's devotion and racist motivations influence Planned Parenthood and Margaret Sanger as founder and co-founder of the organization that became Planned Parenthood. They have accomplished the unthinkable, bringing Nazi-like eugenics and race weeding to America hidden under the sayings of women's rights, right to choose, and many other slogans. I cannot understand people who say they care about minorities, yet hypocritically support the very action that is causing a slow elimination of the same people group they say they support. If you say you care about people of color and Black Lives Matter, prove it 
by supporting the federal defunding of the organization that kills the most people of color and minorities every year so we can start to increase their population through birth and not just immigration from other countries. The abortion industry kills as many people of color every four days than the KKK killed in 150 years. Also, half the population being aborted are obviously female. Tell me, who is pro, what is pro-women about two females going into a health clinic and only one makes it out alive? As a licensed massage therapist under the health board in Tennessee, I learned the Hippocratic Oath, how health providers must swear to do no harm to their patients. I wouldn't be able to keep performing a health practice if I knew my actions were being destructive to my clients. So I asked doctors who perform abortion, how do you sleep well at night knowing that you are breaking the very Hippocratic oath that you swore to perform? You perform abortions on living humans who have a heartbeat and a whole future ahead of them. But if you just said no, many people would still be alive today. <clears throat> many women will judge me simply because I'm a man who holds a pro-life position. But even if men became pregnant instead of women, obviously I would still hold this position. Life is sacred, and you shouldn't be able to terminate a developing human who has a heartbeat and will eventually live on the other side of the womb. It's not that men don't have a huge role in this issue. In fact, I believe men should be jailed who refuse to give child support. But cowardly men have every reason to be pro-choice. It eliminates the responsibility to provide and be nurturing to the human they have created. Let's encourage a culture of life, defund Planned Parenthood, shun its racist founders, and live life as if the future is now, where all peoples, regardless of size, location, place of origin, size, color, have equal rights. Let us rid ourselves of the broken evil dreams of the 20th century, Nazism, extermination of races and people that differ in color and size from us and let us love our neighbor as ourself and stop the violence and hate once and for all thank you peace